a man who got dropped into the NFL and looked like a vet, an all-pro, obviously at a very young age, because he understood the assignment, the technique, but, his body was ready, right, and seemingly but. he's more mature than any human that's ever played his position. Ladies and gentlemen, all-pro, Denver Broncos corner, Patrick Sertain. Yeah, yeah. What's up, dude? What's happening? What's going on? Hey, thank you for joining us. Uh, I don't know if you heard this or not. Pac-Man earlier said that you are the Darrell Revis of this generation, and there hasn't been one. Every corner or defensive back that we've talked to has basically been like, ah, that's the guy, mm -hmm. that's the guy. Do you hear all that noise? Did you expect that immediately upon going into the NFL? And how do you continue to get better? Yeah, you know, I've been hearing all of it. Um, obviously, it's high praise um, in regards to my play. And, you know, when you get noticed like that around the league, you know, it has to bring some type of, you know, confidence in, in towards you. So, um, you know, I just got to keep on improving, um, keep on stacking, you know, work on the fundamentals and, you know, just, you know, get better each and every day and prepare for a better year. Hell yeah. Pat, I know, uh, I know Nick Saban loves his DBs. He loves coaching up his DBs. How did you, like your time in Alabama, do you realize now, like you look back at things that he was teaching you and realize, like, hey, this guy is – is legit, obviously. I'm just interested in what it was like to play for him. Yeah, um, Coach Saban, he was, you know, very hands-on. Um, you know, he understands everything, you know, so as far as DB play. Um, in the meeting rooms, he always been in the DB room, um, teaching us different techniques. Um, he's really a DB uh, guru. So when you learn from guys like that, um, you know, that know how to, how to coach at a high level at your position, um, you know, it speaks volumes especially, you know, with the DBs he produced in the league, you know, it just goes to show, you know, what what he, has he done as a coach. So, um, you know, kudos go out to him, you know, just for preparing guys, you know, mentally and physically for the league. So, you know, um, with a guy like that, you know, it all comes together. Hey, I think your massive mitts are potentially partially covering the microphone. If you could move that a little bit, heard you, but it sounded like the bass in your voice was a real deal. I mean, it sounded like you were you were way down there. Let's talk about the coaching because obviously you come from Saban, then you have a coach, then you have another coach, mm -hmm. now you have another coach what? in your third year. In Sean Payton, yeah. what has he been like? What has Vance Joseph been like? What has this year been like as opposed to maybe years past? And what do you expect for this season? Yeah, um, you know, Coach Sean, his resume speaks for for itself. Um, you know, he's a guy that's won a Super Bowl, um, that's been winning at the highest level. And, you know, throughout the first couple, you know, of months here, you can just tell that through the type of guy he is, um, he's really prepared. Um, he's very dialed in, locked in towards the team. So, you know, at the end of the day, when you get, you know, a coach like that, you know the standard and you know what's – what what to expect in a way so um all the guys are fired up you know and ready for the season to start and um you know with Vance I could say that um he's also another defensive guru you know he understands the game very well uh puts his players in positions to win and you know that's a big thing with him um you know he's a player friendly coach his scheme speaks for itself so um we got a great uh, coaching staff going on over here. Hell you know, yeah. Very excited. Hell yeah. The resumes are deep over there as opposed to maybe what it was just a year ago. It helps having the richest owner in the entire sport. Yeah. Keep yeah. balling. <laughs> At your position. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, money could buy everything. Yeah, well, yeah, certainly in this particular business, yes, it yep. can. Pac Man has a question for you, Pat. What's up, Pat? Uh, I got a two party question. Um, my first question is Have you talked to um, the guys over there? Uh, your, your defensive back coach and your your deep uh, uh, what's his name uh, Vance Joseph Vance, Vance, Vance Joseph BJ. about traveling to each side going on the best receiver instead of playing on one side that's the first question my second question what are what are your top three receivers there's a lot of them out there Amari Cooper Devontae Adams Tyreek Hill DJ Moore um, who are your top three in that category and have you talked to them about traveling yeah um, you know I was traveling last year so. Um, you know, throughout certain, you know, game plans, you know, whoever they top receiver, uh, we feel like they're a top receiver. Obviously, I'll be matched. But, you know, on the other hand, you know, I talked to Vance, uh, talked to Coach uh, Parker. Um, and, you know, we mentioned that before, you know, sort of, you know, allowing me to play outside and inside, you know, allowing me to be, you know, versatile in our Oh, Travis Kelsey. You're talking about Travis Kelsey. Right. Yeah, just match all over the field in a way, you know, that – 
helps the defense out and it helps me impact the game more. So uh, we, we've been in conversations about that. So, uh, you know, I'm very excited about that uh, for the season. But top three receivers, right now I'm going to have to go with Devontae, Jettas, and uh, Tyreek. So Devontae is just like impossible to stick with, huh? His get off, his shake is just in, insane. Is that real? Yeah, he's he pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he just put up a one or whatever. And then Justin Jefferson has 180 yards at halftime most games. Yep. That scheme seemingly is perfect for him to kind of take advantage of everything he's great at, which is everything. And then Tyreek Hill is looking for to get 2,000 yards this year yeah. if two is able to stay safe. We're in this league now where everybody's throwing, throwing, throwing all over the place. If you travel with a guy, and this happened with Revis, and this has happened with great corners in the past, yeah. you can almost get bored, right? Like Because they're like, okay, wherever – Wherever he is, we're not going to go. Do you even think about that? Or, or what is kind of the mindset whenever, you, whenever you're whenever you in play-by-play -play in the games? Yeah, you know, I look, you know, I look for challenges like that, you know. Um, but I don't go into the game thinking they ain't going to throw my way because, you know, it's the NFL. Uh, you know, when your name is called, your name is called. So at the end of the day, I'm always locked in, every play down in, every snap because, you know, once that opportunity come your way, you know, you got to make a play. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very locked in on my keys, um, whether I'm going against the best, whether I'm going against somebody else. You know, I'm just locked in, dialed in on every matchup. So, Hey, how many trash guys are in the league, huh? Guys, <laughs> you don't have to give names, but is there guys that, like, first series, you're like, oh, Jeez. this dude should not be in the same league as all of us. Is there is that situation happening to you yet? You're only in your third year, and I'm asking you that question. Quite it's fucking sure. absurd. I'm quite sure. I mean, I could I – could, I mean, there's there's some guys, obviously, that's, you know, you know the premier guys and you know, you know the good guys, and then there's some dudes that be, like, slacking in a way in some categories. Not saying that they bad, but – you know, as far as the matchup issue, you know, it wouldn't be no problem. You know, there's some guys, you know, that you line up against. But, uh, you know, going into year three, I'm starting to understand that more and see that more. You know, obviously, when you watch film, you could tell by different tendencies, the receivers. And, you know, you could you could look at a lot through film, you know, the eye in the sky don't lie. And uh, I could say you could tell a difference between the elites and, you know, the average, you know, type of players. What is it, just effort? Every single play or, like, competitive – what is it, you think, between the the greats and the ones that are kind of just middle of the road? Because you are a great uh, – why do you think you're at the top and maybe others are at the middle? Is it a mentality thing? What do you think it is? I mean, I just think I prepare where well my technique um, speaks for itself. You know, I put consistent film on the table each and every week. Um, and, you know, just – it speaks for itself my play. Um you know, with people seeing me, I believe that's a huge, um, huge part of my game. You know, just staying consistent, being locked in, you know, going against the opposing team's number one receiver. Um, I just think my play speaks for itself. Yeah, That's but why I'm regarded and mentioned into that category. Yeah, yeah, but not everybody's like you, you know. Yeah, so, like, for the rest of your career, <laughs> people are going to be like, why the yeah. fuck is this guy <laughs> like this guy? And they can say, well, his dad played. And it's like, well, a lot of guys have dads. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys don't just get dropped in year one and they're all pro. And, like, yeah. year three, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, he's going with the one. He, he's playing that dude. Yeah, who's that? Just that, whoever they got. They're putting them on there. It's an incredible thing. They'll be at, they'll be wondering why you are the way you are for a long time. And we're lucky to get to watch it. Go ahead, AJ. Pat, are we going to get to see you uh, return some kicks this year? I hear there might be a rumor you're, you're doing that a little bit. Don't do that. Why not? Hey, I ain't going to lie. Um, what's, what, the crazy thing about it was, it was we was in practice one time, and um, a little bit of info, Sean came up, and he was just asking around, like, you know, who punt returned before we had experience of, you know, returning kicks? You know, me being confident, you know, because I returned to high school, you know, I got some good tape of me in high school. I was like, yeah, shoot, that's me. And, uh, you know, he put me back there without no hesitation. You know, I got some catches in, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I feel very comfortable back there, you know. Um, yeah, just fair you know, catching, right? No. Nah. Just fair catching. No. Nah. Every single nah, time, nah, nah, just nah, nah, fair nah, catch nah, it. Nah. Yeah, it's a win for both, <laughs> you and the nah. punter. We fair catch it. We get the ball. <laughs> we're nah. off the field. You just had a really difficult series on defense. Yeah. Hey, we got to a punt. That's good news. Let's uh, fair catch I, this thing and get the fuck off the field. Nah. I'm not trying to be bad there for no reason, though. 
<laughs> no, you're getting noise. the ball back. Yeah, getting the ball. But no, I like that right there. Yeah, this guy was an asshole. As you know, as a returner, no need for that. We don't need you to join yeah, the Yeah, facts. Ring. Yeah. Pack, you, pack no. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, he was an asshole. I watch you, too. Yeah, we don't need you to be an asshole. Yeah, you know it, would, it would be great for you <laughs> to get back there. Hey, I got one more yeah. question, man. The technique and how disciplined you are, does, did that have something to do with growing up um, with your father playing in the league, or is that just something – that one of your coaches installed in you? Where did that come from? Um, You know, my dad taught me a lot, but I just think that my experience of playing the position, you know, um, you know, as years go on, you could just um, tell and you could just look at um, certain things, your keys, and just be like, oh, I could work on this and work on that. And I could say over time, I build on working on that, whether it's patience, my technique, um, you know, locking in on my keys, reading the hips. I just think that plays a big part of my game. Um, you know, because early on, you know, high school, you know, I was very raw out there. Yeah. And we you know when I got to college, not a pros, I could say I developed that and just became, you know, second nature. I just give you a little fucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? I give you a little. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Devonte doing the hand dance. It's unbelievable to watch you work. Truly. Now, granted, you and Devonte did have some epic battles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some epic yeah. battles. Now, Devonte's mm -hmm. been around what? Fourteen years? How many years? Devonte been in the league? Oh, ten. Ten, ten years or whatever ten. it is. Ten years. So he's got ten years of tricks and shit, yeah. and he knows it. And you're just Damn getting ball, you're just getting thrown right into guys that have been around the NFL forever. And you two having a good joust is great for the AFC West and great for the NFL. We can't wait to watch it. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Pat, speaking of the AFC West, you're talking about your preparation and your film study and all that kind of stuff. And obviously when the opportunity does come, like you can't take a playoff because if you do, you're going to get burned potentially. But when you look at playing Herbert and Mahomes and those kind of guys two times a year, does anything extra go into preparation for that, uh, considering, like, you know what a guy like Mahomes can do and you know what a guy like Herbert can do? Yeah, um, like you say, you got to, like, take time and extra preparation and film study. Um, you know, because those type of quarterbacks, they can make every throw on the field. And, um, you know, it's it's you could say that you could just, you know, just – tell off the eye, but you really got to lock in and prepare because with their schemes and how they utilize them and, you know, every throw that they make, you know, it's sort of like I got to be in this position to make this play, be in that position to make this play. So, um, you know, with those type of quarterbacks, you know, top tier elite quarterback talents, um, you really got to hone in on film study, preparation, um, giving them quarterbacks different looks and stuff like that because – you know, I, I've seen it. You know, they could, they could play. So, um, I just think the biggest thing is locking in on the film. At the end of the day, you said you were talking. To, uh, I don't know if it was Vance or Sean Payton or both of them about you know being able to play outside, being able to play inside. And I said immediately, right. "Oh, Travis Kelsey." I, I assume that's because the, how important the tight end position has become to most offenses, most specifically the Kansas City Chiefs offense. Is there something about Travis Kelsey that makes him different than others? Because from looking outside in, and I don't watch film on these teams, it, he's getting the ball whenever it matters. Right. I, I assume everybody yeah. else feels that way. Is that a part of the conversation yeah. with Vance about in the division, this is the guy, Travis Kelsey, maybe greatest tight end of all time happening? Yeah, um, there's some talks about that. Um, but it just goes, you know, as far as the scheme, um, being able to match good on good in a way. So so that corners when they match on like tight ends and linebackers match on receivers, but corners match with receivers. Um, like a slot formations, um, wild, wild wing slot formations and stuff like that. Um, I just think that that's the key towards why he has it like that. But, you know, like you said, with guys like Travis Kelsey, that's, you know, a unicorn at his position that could run every route in the route tree. Um, that's a playmaker like that. Um, obviously, conversation uh, will come to talk like, about that. Yeah, you're 6'2", too, too. Let's not get mm – -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Ain't a small yeah, yeah. guy out there. Yeah. No. And 6'2 in the NFL is like 6'4 in the NBA. Because they're pushing right. your head down. Yep. 
We need you to be as small as possible. You need to be barefoot. This fucking be tiny out here. So you're a big dude, fast, quick. Travis Kelsey seemingly always open. What a fun thing that could potentially be for the next, well, I don't know, 10 years. Yeah. Travis yep. isn't getting old, right. doesn't feel like. Go ahead, Tone. Yeah, Patrick, obviously uh, Nuggets parade is today. The Avs won and had a parade last year. Um, does hmm. that creep into uh, the Broncos locker room? Like, does the success of of Denver creeping and kind of make you guys uh, want to have a parade of your own more? Yeah, it's something in the air. Um, yeah, it's I weed. That All that city. dope out there. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's smoking <laughs> dope out there. That's what it is. Sorry, but go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I just think there's, like, you could sense the winning culture in the city. And, um, you know, obviously with the Avs and now the Nuggets, you could just tell that, you know, the fans are – experiencing you know winning situations and you know when it's now it's all time coming up you know you could just feel the energy and you know and feel the anticipation of it you know of winning and you know we got the right um you know we got the right pieces put together you know it's all about showing up and showing out on sundays hell yeah and mondays and thursdays Plus. And probably Friday. Wednesday's coming yeah, up. There's Friday, gonna be yeah, Saturdays yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. as well. <laughs> so it's every day's a Sunday though. Let's just move the schedule. Uh we appreciate you joining us. What's next? You got a little off time or you work all the way through? Yeah, we just uh finished our last practice of uh mini camp. Now we got a little break before training camp. So um, you know, calm before the storm, you know, sit down, relax, travel some, spend time with family. You, know, so. you go like Mount Everest, backpacking through Europe, or like a beach. No, I'm 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 all over the place. You know, Cabo, Greece. Uh, oh, whoa! Traveling. Whoa! Yeah. Hey, listen. Okay. Pretty hot in Greece. Yeah, that's why you play so good. You know, some yeah. people are motivated by different things. This guy yeah. wants to go to fucking Santorini. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gonna have to play some good football. We appreciate you joining us. Please tell Sean and Vance Joseph we say what's up, and the rest of the boys can't wait to watch you this year. All right, appreciate y'all, man. Hey, hell yeah. Have a great break over there in Greece. Here we yeah. go. Oh, oh yeah. Come on. Oh. Kidding me? Joe Buck. Uh, you might go to Wyoming. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick's <laughs> saying. Yeah, yeah. Hey.